Welcome back and welcome back to hockey. The preseason has already happened, but the regular season gets started here in just a day's time. Assuming I get this edited in the amount of time that I'm hoping I can, and that is certainly not a given based on how other videos have gone so far this summer. I'm working with a new video editor to try and cut some costs with Premiere, and you don't really care about that. The point is, the hockey season is just around the corner, and we got some predictions to get done. I was hoping, like last year, that I could get predictions done for all four divisions. That's probably not going to happen before Tuesday, so... We'll stick with the home division, the Pacific division, where I gotta say, not to pat myself on the back too much, but my predictions for last year's Pacific division standings did end up being the best of the three years that I've kept track of them. I had four teams correct in the spots they would be, three others, give or take a spot or two, and one that I was fairly wrong about, though in fairness, it's a team that I think everyone was pretty wrong about going into the season, aside from some well, at least at the time, we would have called them delusional Canucks fans. And either way, thankfully, I suppose at the very least, I could only really have been so wrong about the Canucks going into last season, since the bottom two teams in the division were pretty predictable going into the season, and I don't really expect much to change there going into this season. Really, as a whole, I think the Pacific Division is probably the easiest to predict from top to bottom. There's some definitely some decisions to be made of ones that I think could go in a couple of spots as we get towards the top, but the bottom shouldn't look too much different than it did last year. In the 8th spot, I do expect the San Jose Sharks to finish last in the division once again. Probably not quite as bad as last season. They're very unlikely, I would say, to be pushing the record books when it comes to farthest away from the NHL average in goals per game like they were last season, especially with some of the pickups they made for some middle six type of forwards. Alex Wember, Luke Cunning. Cody CC and some guys that will end up filling out their top six, which kind of tells you as much as you need to know about the rest of the lineup. There's also Macklin Celebrini, who they got in the first overall, in the draft first overall. It'll be interesting to see how much they really play him. The team could be enough of a mess that they decide that they'd rather save him from that, even if he is ready for the NHL. That's a probably a discussion for another time. Either way, don't think that he's going to save the Sharks anyway. I mean... We already saw last year how Connor Bedard wasn't quite able to rescue an absolutely dreadful Blackhawks team from really much more than one or two spots at the bottom of the league. Anyway, one more time, while I do expect the Sharks to be a little bit better than last season, it is a team coming off of being 31st in the league in goals for per game and a very decidedly 32nd in goals against per game, which is actually where they were worse between the two ends of the ice. So... Yeah, there's a long way to go up before we really talk about them challenging really even the seventh spot, which, again, is not one that I expect to change from last season. I think it's a pretty easy place to put the Anaheim Ducks. It's a Ducks team that, as far as being better or worse than last season, I don't really know what to make of the Ducks, and I'm honestly not sure that they know what to make of themselves. They did have the fantastic rebrand as far as their jerseys go, so that was nice to see in the offseason. They didn't really rebrand the team itself much, though. So while they will be a lot easier to watch, or at least easier on the eyes, the hockey itself, for Ducks fans, might not end up being that much easier to watch. Still, at the very least, you still get to watch Leo Carlson, Mason McTavish, and Trevor Zegras, who stuck around, so it's not all bad news in Ducks land, and while being 30th in both goals for and goals against per game last season certainly doesn't look that much better than the Sharks, they actually did do significantly better when it came to the actual stats themselves. In fact, they almost gave up a half goal less per game than the Sharks did. That's how bad things were for the Sharks when it came to giving up goals. And then in the sixth spot, it's another one that really wasn't all that difficult for me, to be honest. It's maybe one I'm a little bit less sure of than I am in eighth and seventh place. But the Calgary Flames seem like the sixth place team in this division without really too much extra thought. Now, I still think there's some potential here for the Flames to finally pull things together a little bit. This is a team that was definitely a bit of a mess last season. I mean, they still finished ahead of the Kraken, so I know I'll hear about that probably in the comments from some Flames fans. Still, this is a team that I just... It just seems like a bit of a mess, and it's probably going still more in the wrong direction. Really, the only huge move they made in the offseason was moving on from Markstrom and honestly I think Wolf might be a better goaltender in the long run for them whether or not he or Vladar ends up getting more of the time this season 
I feel like Wolf probably gets the chance to be the starting goaltender, or at least the 1A goaltender going into the year and prove that he's ready for that spot. We'll have to wait and see. Still, I don't think this is a team that you can really expect that much of. That having been said, the team that I predicted to be sixth in the division last year going into the season ended up winning the division, so you never know. And I suppose if you want to be optimistic as a Flames fan, it is a team that was right around the middle of the league, 18th place with a 3.09 goals per game last season. Their weakness was certainly in how frequently they were giving up goals where they finished 23rd in the NHL. And if Wolf can provide a little bit better of a backstop, then maybe it is a team that can make a move forward if they can, again, play a little bit more consistently. Moving on, though, up next we get into the bubble playoff type of teams. Really, I think the fourth and fifth spots are probably between two teams. Either one I could see getting the spots, though there's one much more likely in my eyes to get the fourth spot than the other. And while there's still another team that could fall into this mix with these other two, I think it's probably the LA Kings and Seattle Kraken that are going to be playing for that fourth spot in the Pacific or one of the two wildcard spots. I do think it's more likely than not that we see four from the Pacific and four from the Central, so one wildcard team from each division. But the Central did make some interesting moves, so we'll have to wait and see if maybe they can claim all five spots or both the wildcard spots and then obviously the three they get from their division. Either way, when it comes to the Kings or Kraken, these are likely the two teams that are going to be playing for one of those wildcard spots coming down to the wire at the end of the season. And as much as I would like to make the homer pick and put the Kraken in that four spot and obviously the Kings losing Dowdy month to month does not help them very much to be realistic honestly I think in the fifth spot this is probably where the Seattle Kraken end up falling now again this is still an upgrade from where they ended up last season sixth in the division in basically a dead heat with the Flames, but unlike the Flames, the Kraken did make some significant additions in the offseason. Yeah, the contracts don't necessarily look fantastic or how they're going to age, especially when it comes to Stevenson and Montour, but the fact of the matter is, regardless of what the contracts look like, this is a team that on paper looks a lot better going into the season than it did going into last season, assuming everyone can stay healthy, which is a lot to assume really of any team in the NHL. Hockey is a violent game that has an 82 game season. So injuries are going to happen for pretty much every team in the NHL over the course of the season. Obviously some teams will get hit worse than others, especially with guys like Andre Burakovsky and Jade Schwartz who have had at the very least recent history of injuries and especially Burakovsky's case, significant chunks of each of the last two seasons. It, yeah, it's going to come down to the health of those players over the course of the season, especially with Burakovsky and Schwartz being a decent amount of the offensive potential of this team. That being said, I do think the Kraken are a little bit better equipped to fill those spots when injuries do happen than previous seasons, especially with some of the younger guys from the first couple of draft classes getting to the point where they're NHL ready. Ryan Winterton in particular, surprising with how good he looked in the preseason. And he might even make some appearances pretty early on this season, especially if there are some injuries going in. Jared McCann missed the last preseason game because of an injury, though I don't think it'll keep him out of the start of the season, but still something to keep an eye on. And then there's obviously the wild card of how Shane Wright will play in his first full season. I do have to say that in that way, I am feeling pretty optimistic. Shane Wright, to me, looks like a player that you could keep an eye on here going into the season. I even feel optimistic enough about how Shane Wright is going to play this season that I spent a fantasy pick on him. It was the last pick in the last round, but I did take him on my fantasy team as a bit of a wild card. So, you know, there's that little nugget for all of you who care about my fantasy hockey team, which is probably none of you except for me watching this while I edit. Though even with all that being said, I left out the reason I think to be most optimistic about Seattle's chances going into the season, and that is the change behind the bench in the coaching staff. Now with a much more offensively focused scheme, certainly a scheme that's going to stretch out the ice a little bit more vertically and do a lot less of the dumping and chasing that we saw to get into the offensive zone over the last couple of years. Of course, well, the last three years, the entire history of the Kraken, now, obviously, that did work in their second season. They were able to forecheck very well and also take advantage of some 
miscues of opponents and get through the neutral zone and get those rush chances, which for whatever reason, I don't really know. And I'm not even convinced that the coaching staff at the time knew it worked out that season and then completely disappeared last season. This year, though, there is definitely a obvious change in the pace of play that the team wants to be at and stretching out the ice is going to be part of that. So I do not expect this team to once again finish in the bottom five in the NHL when it comes to goals for per game. And considering they finished last year eighth in goals against per game, if they can even be close to that around the top 10, I do expect because of the stretching out the ice, they probably won't necessarily be in the top five or maybe even eighth when it comes to goals against. They'll probably give up a few more goals. But if they can stay around that top 10 area and significantly improve offensively, I don't think it's unrealistic to think this is a team that does have a shot at a playoff spot. Though still, obviously, I don't feel optimistic enough to actually put them in a clear playoff spot or a likely playoff spot with being fourth in the division where I have the LA Kings. I still think the Kings probably have a better roster. I would actually probably take the crack in goaltending or at least Joey Decord over the hodgepodge and who's who of, oh, that's where he ended up that the Kings are rolling out in net. So we'll see how goaltending goes. I mean, a couple of these guys have had pretty good years in their career and they've all had more iffy years. So we'll see what the Kings get out of that core. It sounds like they're going to change things up as far as their scheme goes. Maybe the days of the one, three, one are finally over for the Kings. We'll just have to wait and see. This is a team that's kind of for the last few years, treaded water around that kind of third spot, fourth spot in the division, still likely to make the playoffs, but yeah, this is definitely a team that if they get off to a bad start or have a tough middle of the season, if they go on any kind of streak of losing games, have a bad month, they could find themselves out of the playoff picture, especially with, like I said, missing Drew Doughty for the first couple of months. I mean, he's month to month, so at least a significant chunk of the start of the season. We'll see what kind of start this team can get off to. If it is a slow start, let's just say I'm not nearly as confident that they'll be able to come back from the type of start to a season the Oilers had last year as well. The Oilers were able to come back from that. Even still, this is a team that finished in the middle of the league 16th in goals four per game last season. So yeah, middling team kind of around that bubble playoff spot offensively, but they were third best in goals against per game. Now, again, this is with a change in scheme and coming away from that suffocating 1-3-1 that they've been running for the last few years, if in fact they do move on from that then maybe those numbers meet in the middle a little bit. Maybe they get a little bit better offensively if they open things up and probably open things up a little bit for the other team to come back the other way. So maybe they fall out of that top three when it comes to goals against. And who knows how the change in net might affect that with Talbot leaving. So I suppose at the very least, there's some intrigue with the Kings anyway, at least more going into the season than there has been the last couple of seasons for me. I guess the last couple of years, they've just kind of seemed like the generic good team that'll probably get a wild card spot or third in the division, maybe make it through a round and then find their way out of the playoffs. This season, I think there might be a little bit more of a larger window of where the Kings could end up falling come the end of the season. And like the Ducks, at the very least, they'll look a lot better while they're doing it with that rebrand. Maybe part of the reason I haven't really been interested in the Kings is because they had some of the blandest jerseys the NHL had to offer, and now that, well, at least again, they look a little bit better. And that brings us to the top three, the three teams I at least see going into the season as being the three most likely to get those three guaranteed spots into the playoffs from the Pacific Division. And in the third spot, and I'm sure I'll probably get some upset comments for once again underrating this team, but the one that I do see of being the most likely of the three to potentially fall back a little bit and maybe get into a three-way battle with the Kraken and Kings for those spots, though. Again, it's the team I feel most confident will claim a third spot in the division if they need to. It is the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I know the Canucks surprised everybody, finished first in the division last year, honestly played very well at both ends of the ice. They finished sixth in the NHL in both goals for and goals against per game last season. So a pretty well-balanced attack, even for everything that they got as far as notoriety for scoring a lot of goals. At the same time, that is kind of part of where my 
I don't know if concerns the right word because I still think this is a playoff team much more likely than not, but reason to think that they might come back towards the pack a little bit is they did significantly outscore their expected goals last season. Their shooting percentage was crazy. A lot of the shooting percentages on the team for individual players were crazy, aside from Elias Pettersson, who had a you know, pretty, you know, predictable year, I guess, as far as stats are concerned. He got the production, I should say, that you would expect from what he was able to do as far as shots and offensive chances. He got the amount of scoring you'd expect. Probably could have said that a little bit better, but the point is the team as a whole significantly outscored what you would expect from the chances they were getting as far as the advanced stats are concerned. And yes, I know that's probably going to sound like excuse making or just trying to come up with reasons to not believe in the Canucks and underrate them like I did going into last season. I mean, it wouldn't be as significant of an underrating. I had them six last year and they ended up winning the division. So even if they win the division, I can't possibly have underrated them as much as I did last year. Even still, these are all the same type of things that people that weren't believers in the Kraken repeating what they did in their second season in their third season pointed out. In that second season, the Kraken had very high shooting percentages with a lot of individual players and, as a team, significantly outperformed offensively what the expected stats and some of those advanced stats would have said the Kraken, how they were actually playing. They just scored more than maybe they earned as far as the advanced stats are concerned. And sure enough, we saw that regress back to the mean and even dip under the mean last season. So I'm not necessarily saying that the Canucks are going to have an entire collapse like the Kraken did last year and fall into the bottom five in the league scoring wise. At the same time, I'm not necessarily expecting the Canucks to finish near the top five like they did last year. Offensively anyway, defensively. Who knows, maybe they just are that good defensively. I think there are some pretty big questions as far as health in net for the Canucks. And while it sounds like Demko might be back before he misses too much time at the start of the season, he's already had one or two setbacks now. So obviously you'd like for him to get back and stay healthy. But yeah, health in the goaltending part of this team is something to be concerned about even if they are able to score as much as they did last season. So that then leaves just two teams left in the division and obviously when I tell you who I have in second you'll know by process of elimination who's in first but in the second spot I don't think it'll be too much of a surprise to most people that I do have the Vegas Golden Knights which means the Edmonton Oilers I have in first but we'll start with the Golden Knights. This is a team that I mean honestly the more I look at it it might be the first time I'm not going to look through all six or seven off seasons they've had, but certainly one of the first times that they may have gotten worse on paper in the off season. They at the very least lost some pretty big pieces in Chandler Stevenson and obviously March is being the biggest, but I don't know. It's, it's still the golden Knights. I just feel like they're going to find some way through whatever amount of injuries or whatever the heck goes on with this team over the course of the year. They're going to find a way to, still end up second in the division, probably somewhere around like a 105, 110 points at the most. I mean, I don't think that they're really going to be able to keep up with the Oilers, who I do kind of expect to run away with this division, but I, I don't know why. It just seems like this is just what the Golden Knights do. Maybe they end up falling back a little bit, especially if they start to have injuries like they have a couple of these last couple seasons, then they fall back to that third spot, but... I mean, they did miss the playoffs two years ago, so it's not necessarily given that they are going to miss the playoffs, but it just has that feeling like a season that might not always go exactly the way the Golden Knights would like it to, but they'll find a way to end up second in the division with a pretty respectable amount of points and going into the playoffs with some trick up their sleeve to get better as soon as the postseason does start. Maybe not good enough to be an actual cup contender, but this is still going to be a good team, and especially with question marks throughout the middle part of the division, it's still the one I expect most to be closest to that top team in the Oilers. And I don't know, maybe that's unfounded to some degree. I mean, the Canucks probably deserve to be in the second spot and the Golden Knights in the third spot, especially considering when it comes to last season stats. Yeah, the Golden Knights certainly didn't do as 
good as the Canucks did. They finished 14th in goals for per game and 12th in goals against. So still pretty well in both of those two spots, but nowhere near as good as the sixth that the Canucks had in both of those categories. And like I said, the Golden Knights, I'd say more than the Canucks didn't get better at the very least in the off season on paper as a team. But I at least think that the Canucks may have overperformed last season and Vegas due in large part to injuries, maybe underperformed a little bit. I don't know. For whatever reason, like I said, these are all predictions and regardless of whether I put the Canucks second or Golden Knights third, it's unlikely that that's going to be the big difference between me predicting everything perfectly. So I'm going to stick with my gut here and put Vegas second. And yeah, we'll go with that. I don't feel confident about it, but someone had to be second. When it comes to who I have finishing first in the division, though, that I somewhat unfortunately do feel pretty confident in. I'm pretty sure it is going to be the Edmonton Oilers. Now, Nobody expected the Oilers to get off to the start they did last season, so anything can still happen. This is the NHL, but yeah, this I think is unquestionably on paper the best team in the division going into the year, and I really don't see much of a reason to pick anybody other than the Oilers to finish first in the division. I mean, at the very least, even though they didn't win the division, and as far as goals for and goals against are concerned, they did have the best scoring of any team in the division. They finished fourth in the NHL in goals for per game. And we're below the Canucks at 10th in goals against, which honestly is better than I expected. I think the middle part of the season there where they went on a stretch of almost a month of only giving up one or two goals per game. Did a lot of heavy lifting when it came to dragging that number of goals against per game down. Either way, this is a team that played very well at both ends of the ice. I mean, certainly still better offensively than defensively like we've come to expect from Edmonton for years and years now but they definitely improved things quite a bit at the defensive end of the ice and certainly in net. I mean, Skinner still is a bit streaky and I don't know that I'm quite as high on him as most Oilers fans are, but fair enough. They're fans of the team for a reason. And there's no denying that this team obviously did make it the furthest of any Pacific division team in the playoffs. Fortunately, they came up one game short, but they did make it the furthest. Now, whether or not they can make it back to the finals for a second straight year, that remains obviously to be seen. The playoffs are quite a gauntlet in doing what, I mean, I suppose both the teams from Florida did of making it to the finals in consecutive years. Obviously, Tampa Bay made it for three straight years, won it twice, and now the other team on the other side of Florida has made it two straight years and won one of them. Yeah, I don't know if the Oilers quite have that in them. I mean, it's certainly possible. This is still a very good team. But regardless of whether or not they make it back, they're unlikely to win it because, well, Corey Perry is still on the roster. I mean, sure, if you want to doubt the Oilers, there's probably better reasons than that, like the two offer sheets that they lost and other changes that were made in the offseason. Who knows whether or not Skinner can keep up what he's doing, but he's a young goaltender. He's probably getting better rather than worse. There's all sorts of things that can change in a year's time. They could be more injured, certainly, than they were last year. They did Pretty good luck with injuries last year, I feel like, if I remember correctly. Obviously, they're probably not going to get off to as bad of a start as they did last season. Who knows what any of it holds. I don't think there's any way that the Oilers don't make the playoffs. And honestly, if I could bet, I probably would bet that the Oilers win this division. And then what happens in the playoffs? Who knows? But anyway, there you go. Once again, those are my preseason predictions for the Pacific Division. Obviously, this is more of a for fun exercise than anything else. Sure, I put some research and all that into it to at least get it somewhat close. But yeah, it would still take a miracle for this to be exactly right at the end of the season. I mean, I feel pretty confident, like I said, about the eighth and seventh spots, the Sharks and Ducks respectively. And I feel pretty confident about that first spot in the Oilers. It might be a little bit more contested because teams are trying to actually win games rather than lose them. It's a lot easier to be bad like the Sharks are than to be good enough to guarantee yourself as the best team in the division. Either way, feel pretty good about 7, 8, and 1. I also feel pretty good about 6th. I mean, the Flames could prove me wrong, but I doubt they prove me that wrong. And then 5th through 2nd, yeah, I think all of that could shake out in any sorts of different ways. Maybe the Kraken really take to this new system and get 2nd in the division, would love for that to happen. I don't think it's going to. I would love for it to happen, though. And who knows, maybe the 
Gold Knights really are headed downwards. Things are finally catching up with them, and they find themselves out of a playoff spot again. Really, I think, yeah, second through fifth could shake out in all sorts of different ways. This is just how I would pick it if I had to. So there you go. Don't know what you take from that. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of this. Obviously, I would expect most of you will think I'm wrong about at least one of these teams, if not multiple. So, yeah, I'd love to see your thoughts down in the comment section. And until next time, which will be the start of the season, stay safe out there, be good to each other, God bless, and go Kraken. Oh, also, because I know there's people waiting for the next episode, episode six of the History of Hockey series, because I said I was going to get that out before the season. I am still actively working on that, but because of the changes I've made to how I'm my workflow and making videos it's taking a little bit longer to do it and some other stuff has come up in the off season but I am still actively working on that it's about halfway done at this point so it'll be out here sooner rather than later hopefully but yeah keep an eye out for that soon and season starts on Tuesday see you soon <laughs>